So we researched the completely fair scheduler, uh, otherwise known as a CFS. The purpose of a process scheduler is to allow operating systems to run multiple programs at the same time seamlessly from the user's point of view, keeping the CPU as busy as possible by determining what the CPU should be running and how long it should be running for for each process. In Linux version 0.01, .01, so not even the first release of Linux, there was a scheduler that had only 20 lines of code and was very simple. Um, it worked by just putting all the processes that need to be run into a queue and then traversing that queue in reverse order. After the traverse, it finds the process with the most need of the CPU and then runs it. Uh, Linux version 1.2 uses round robin scheduling. Uh, just basically cycling through processes and giving each process a short burst of CPU time. Uh, if the process doesn't finish during its CPU time, it just goes back into the running queue. That's a very oversimplified view of round-robin scheduling, but what's important that is that it's not that efficient and was replaced. Uh, it was replaced in a later version, not specifically round-robin was replaced, but another scheduler was replaced in Linux version 2.6 by the O1 scheduler, and it was much better than the previous schedulers and worked by switching processes between two arrays. Every time the processes switch arrays, they're all given an equal amount of CPU time. It's kind of hard to explain without a visual, but it's just swap. the processes are being swapped between two arrays, and every time they switch, they're all given an equal amount of runtime. It was very complex though, because the algorithm had to keep track of the average amount of sleep time that each process was getting. It was replaced by the completely fair scheduler, and it was actually the person who made the CFS was the same person who made the O1 scheduler, Ingo Molnar. So the idea behind it is that if one process is running, it gets 100% of the CPU's power. If four processes are running, for example, they would each get 25. It basically just gives all the processes an equal amount of CPU. So it does not keep track of average sleep time like the O1, allowing it to be much simpler and uh, better just as fast. So this is just a visual of the idea behind it. Uh, obviously, it doesn't achieve this ideal because of factors and processes like how processes sleep and how computers aren't perfect but this is what the cfs tries to go for the algorithm uses a self-balancing binary tree uh, processes on the left side of the tree uh, need the cpu the most so they have had the least amount of cpu time processes on the right side need the cpu the least so they've had the most amount of cpu time when it's time for a context switch, uh, the algorithm chooses the leftmost node to run, and then it, once it's ran, it puts it back into the tree with a recalculated amount of CPU time it has received. So basically, this is a visual of the tree. So if process 2 gets ran here, uh, it's on the very left side, so it has had the least amount of CPU time out of all these processes. So it gets ran, and then the CPU time it has is going to go up because it was just ran. So it's going to be reinserted into the tree farther to the right after it gets run. So this means that starvation doesn't occur because processes that have not been run equally will always be moved to the left and eventually get ran. So there's no processes that are just consuming all of the runtime. Alternatives to the completely fair scheduler include the BrainFuck scheduler, which runs through a doubly linked list and executes the highest priority task first, rather than uh, sharing everything fairly. So it is known to improve performance when on uh, computers with fewer cores. And on the topic of multi-core processors, you can either have asymmetric or symmetric processing when it comes to dealing with multiple cores. The scheduler can either run for all cores, or each core can schedule itself. While the completely fair schedule is the default, you can also choose for tasks first in, first out, which, as the name implies, executes tasks uh, in the order that they arrive, round robin, which assigns time to each process. And uh, as previously stated, if they run out of time uh, before the process is finished, they will go back in the running queue. So the downsides of the completely fair scheduler are in its simplicity. 
it's best used on a single core processor that is only running a few processes. But once you introduce things like multi-core processors or containers like Docker, uh, that's where things get a bit more complex. The scheduler was patched to improve performance with multi-core processors because there were multiple bugs that would happen due to how it interacted with load balancing and the completely fair scheduler, which would leave CPUs idling for long periods of time and decrease performance. The issue with containerized workspaces as, as programs like Docker became popular was that a greater number of threads was prioritized by the scheduler regardless of priority or workload which would cause a great performance dip when different containers would have a variety of workloads. There are several proposals that I've either previously resolved these issues or have been proposed to resolve the issues, uh, mostly in the realm of making the algorithm more complex, which goes against the improvement that it made on the O1 scheduler. Um, so some of the proposals, including adding an adaptable, completely fair scheduler, have not been implemented yet. Uh, another alternative would be to allow users to program their own schedulers. Uh, this is something that has been proposed to allow people to optimize the schedulers for their specific workload. The current method of changing schedulers involves changing the Linux source code, which is complicated for casual users. Allowing users to do this as a base functionality of Linux would allow people to update quicker to accommodate for new technologies. Though the completely fair scheduler has a few issues, especially as computers become more complex, uh, in the words of the creator, the completely fair scheduler basically models an ideal, precise multitasking CPU on real hardware. So while there can be improvements, it will likely be continued to be used um, until there is a better and more practical alternative.